so oh it's so warm gosh as you can tell for me where I'm living I'm living <laughs> in other words it's warm and man I am digging every minute of it I love it can't wait for summer feels like spring enjoying it even shave my face off you know wow had to put on some of that sunblock because it's so bright and shiny around here but have you ever started off in one direction you know and you were convinced that was the right way to go and then you changed directions and wound up going the other direction and you kind of went that way and you wind up in the destination you wanted but you kind of had to change directions along the way I've done that you know and I kind of started off thinking that I was going to be something or do something and then you wind up doing something else have you ever done that I have because you see sometimes people when they get saved or when they become a Christian they they have a lot of these wild ideas about what a Christian is or how they act or what they do based upon either the way they were taught the way they've seen it on TV based on religion based on countries traditions examples or even sometimes just the place they got saved at sometimes they get saved and they stick at the church wherever it may be and it might have been one of those okay you know that's fine for you but I don't think so I don't want to follow through so we go that way but when people get saved you know I just love this I have a crust of ice if you can see this just floating on top of my Pepsi that's just the perfect Pepsi you know you just you just can't make a Pepsi this perfect you know only God can <laughs> with a refrigerator and a freezer <laughs> delicious but you know you get saved or the person gets saved and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to be so they get a Bible they start reading and they do some Bible studies and they kind of learn along the way and then they fall flat on their face you know and then they don't know what to do because people really when people get saved they, they kind of tell them about this Satan thing and they tell them about this forgiveness thing but they really don't tell them about this guilt thing you know this huge powerful influence it comes up over people and really influences the majority of people that I meet you see it works kind of like this you know they they have been a Christian for a while or maybe they've been saved for a while and they they kind of got their life sorted together you know or maybe they have it all together who knows but they get it together you know, and they're kind of cruising along you know and they're, they're like yeah man you know I'm doing my Sunday thing yeah you know I go midweek you know sometime you know either Thursday or Wednesday whatever and they do some prayer and they contribute monies you know whatever and they feel pretty good about themselves but then comes sin and they suddenly go BAM and they hit the ground and they're smacked and shaken up and then they go I don't want to go to church because I blew it so they kinda like the first place they should go they don't want to go it's kind of like we call it the Adam syndrome you know like as soon as he sinned he headed for Eve I mean he headed for the bushes <laughs> oh well you know I hid so it's kind of like that's what happens a lot with people but there's another part of that that I wanted to talk about because not only do they fall down and avoid church or fall down and avoid God and you know fall down and you know, really just kind of like treat themselves like Bleh. even though Jesus died for them and he knew that in the future they were going to still blow it <laughs> they don't know it yet so when you blow it you should know it that you're going to fall down but the point being is that if you don't know what to do about it then you really get confused about it because frankly you kind of think oh no I thought I needed to be righteous so a lot of times Christians you know I mean in the body of Christ as well as maybe some friends you know they kind of get this righteousness attitude or this righteousness idea that's kind of messed up and then some of them become like legalists you know they they put out this whole false persona because they're hiding something inside that they don't want to deal with you know they they put up all these rules and regulations that they say you gotta do this you gotta do that because real really whenever you meet a legalist they're really talking about themselves 
they really have a problem inside that they haven't reconciled with God. They haven't really forgiven themselves for some way they failed. So to prevent themselves from failing again, they come up with all these rules and regulations, you know. Build a fence, you know, like they say, build a fence around the Torah. <laughs> yeah, right, come on, give me a break. God's put the Torah out there to tell you what to do and how to do it. <laughs> Not to build a fence around it. I mean, that's stupid, you know. So, what happens a lot of times is people get these weird ideas and then they kind of misconstrue it and they build it into something that's not, you know. And then they get all confused and then they add it, this to that and the other thing and then you don't know how to unwind it because it becomes like a Gordian's knot, which, quite frankly, Julius Caesar cut right in half. He said, I can't untie that knot, whack, but I can sure put it to bed. <laughs> so he sliced it. So what you find, really, sometimes when people are doing things is because you don't, and if you don't understand, it's because there's something beneath the surface of it. There's something that motivated them. There's an attitude inside or a, a reason why they do what they do. And that's what we're talking about is that a lot of times people will start to do something and then stop it because they think that they can't do it anymore because <gasps> I blew it. No, you're going through it is what you're doing. Now you can be useful because you see, you go from grace, which you were given, usually to kind of like kind of a self-righteous attitude, really. And then God pops your bubble and you go kind of to guilt. So you go from grace to guilt to grace. And really, I like to say you go from guilt to grace because you're really not much effective until you fall down once or twice. Then people start listening to you. You go, he knows what I'm talking about. He knows. He's been there. <laughs> so you see, Falling down is part of our life, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. And that was an ongoing thing. It was always going to be occurring to us. It was always going to be needed. So God knew ahead of time that you were going to blow it. You know, He knew ahead of time that you were going to screw up or mess up. But what you didn't know was that he already had it planned because your guilt conscience is something you can't take to God. See, he knows that you feel horrible about it. He knows that you kind of like, you know, don't really want to be around holy or righteous people because you think that they glow or somehow they're better than you because right now you're feeling like you're not accepted. But the reality is they're blowing it too and they just know what to do about it. They just go, well, Lord, the good that I would I do not and that which I would not I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin that I live in? Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ that he's going to renew me, the new man that's inside after the image of the incorruptible God so that this corruption can put out incorruption and I'll no longer sin no more. Pretty simple. So they go to God and they say, God, help, clean me up. I got dirty. I got skin knees. I need a band-aid. So God cleans them up, you know, and they move on. But I find lots of times, especially on the internet, that you get people that get all wound up to do something about their sin instead of admit it. Instead of admit it and move on. Instead of come to daddy so to speak and say um, daddy I got I got boo boo. I need cleaned up. Or to admit that hey you know what I got mud on my face. I need to wash it off because I can't see it but guess what. There's not only lipstick on my collar. There's this big little sign here going sin, sin, sin. And everybody can see it except you. Because you didn't look in the mirror. The word and you really didn't go to God, the Spirit, and you're really not listening to what he has to say, conviction, so that you would come to him and be restored into fellowship with everyone. Because your sins can affect everyone. That's the way it is. But you see, instead of dealing with it, what you do is you make it into something that starts to grow. You start, let me, since I fell down, get really righteous. You know, let me go ahead and I'll, I'll put a hundred posts on the internet, you know, or I'll, I'll get all excited about going to church and I'll go to church a hundred times in a row. You start bargaining with your righteousness. You start bargaining with God about what you're going to do to be forgiven. <laughs> and it doesn't work that way, but you try anyway. So you, you decide, well, I'm going to give more money. So you give more money once. Then you realize, I can't afford that. <laughs> Or, better yet, 
you decide, oh, you know what? Social media. I'll go on the social media and I'll flood the market with you know all these Christian things because it makes me feel better when I'm doing a Christian thing. Because as long as I do, 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 it'll make me look, 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 look so much better than I really am because then I'll feel better by doing so much rather than dealing with what's inside. Because you see, God knows why you're doing what you're doing. Now, there's kind of an interesting thing about God. He's kind of sneaky that way. You start off with a guilty conscience doing all this stuff and you can't keep it up, you know, and then you wind up either quit posting or fall away or some ministry you started, you left it, or even sometimes, God forbid, that this is true, but it is in the Christian world, some wife you left behind or some ministry you kind of like devastated or, you know, some as pastors, maybe some people that you've just blown out the doors, you know, and now you're too busy with everyone else. That's all the same thing in God's eyes. We, he just has one word for it, and he just calls it sin, you know, and he's forgiven us for it, but he wants us to deal with it. So you may be hiding something and starting off with the wrong motivation, like you may be trying to do too much, you know, like you're overboard on trying to make yourself holy, or you're overboard in trying to go to church, or you're overboard in trying to do something. But God's sneaky in a certain way, because you see, he knows that you're doing it for the wrong reasons, but he starts and has prepared out there where you are going, with all the wrong reasons, the right solutions. Because what he does is that he takes your wrong motivations and says, okay, well, if you're going to go to church, you know, like 50 times in a row. I'm going to let it kind of sink in a little bit. So for 50 parts, I'm going to kind of like slip in this little part about grace. I'm going to kind of manipulate a little bit of these teachings, you know, to come into the place of grace so that you begin to get little pieces of it as you go in there. And then right before you burn out, you'll figure it out. And so by the time person kind of gets done with, man, why am I working this so hard? I'm working on my salvation. And you know what? God already paid the price. The Holy Spirit goes, check off another one. Conquered. Wrong motivation, right solution. You see, God kind of like takes you the long way around maybe, but you still wind up in the same place. Back to God. That's what happens a lot of times in these ministries even. You know, like you see some mega ministries start off in the wrong direction. You know, they're like, oh, they're doing this and they're doing that and they're wrong. You know, they got this bitterness and kind of like, you know, attitude and actions and they're like slicing and dicing Christians and they kind of go along and you hope, you know, with the wrong motivation that they started, you know, that they're going to change. But the realization is that, you know, God chooses and uses whom he chooses, not whom we choose. And so if he's going to anoint it and appoint it for his kingdom, then what he'll do is he'll take that person way out in left field so that they can run all the way around the track and come back to home base. And when they get to home base, by that time, they'll be going... You know, I really don't need to do all that stuff. I really need to focus in on Jesus. And so, eventually, sometimes, you know, you're going to see a lot of things that look really kind of bizarre out there, but you'll watch the circle get smaller and smaller and smaller as God begins to rope them in back to the place He wants them to be with Him. And I think you're like that. You see... I think you're like me. You have done things with the wrong attitude. You started off with a really bad attitude. You know, you kind of went to church and said, I'm going, but I don't like it. You know, and by the time it was over, it was like, eh, it wasn't so bad. Then you went again, and you went, eh, it isn't too bad. And you went again, and you went, you know, I kind of like it. And you went again, and you went, okay, this is pretty cool. And so you see how it's a process of wearing you down sometimes. Or, like in ministry, you went, oh, I'm going to start this web page, you know, and I'm going to like do this. And then you kind of went, it's a lot of work. You know, and this is hard. And then the first time a trial came, you went, Pow! I don't want to do that. So you don't. The ministries that last, the directions that God will take you, the places that God wants you to be, are going to bless you, not blast you. In other words, you're going to move into a place where you kind of go, man, look at that 
great hyacinth. Had to think about it. That is cool. Look at the way it grows. Man, God, that's a good job. I think I need to water it, Lord. You know, it kind of looks like it's drooping. Of course, it feels wet. Hmm. Don't know, Lord. Wonder what you're doing there. Then you look at another spider plant and you go, man, that's dry, you know. Of course, spider plants like it dry. Hmm. Cool, Lord. Or you go, man, look at that Pepsi. I ought to drink it because you know what? It's got ice chunks floating on it. It's just frozen Pepsi. And man, it just looks like it's just dripping moisture on the outside of the glass. And it's just like, look at his sunshine on his beating on his brow. Man, it looks like it's warm out there. Man, I ought to take a sip. brain freeze for me. I love Pepsi. Excuse me. But you see, that's what God wants to do to you. He wants to take you to a place of blessing. He doesn't want to tell you your life is going to be constantly going from blessing to blessing. But He wants you to know what to do about your life when you sin. He wants you to know that you come to Him again and you walk with Him all the days of your life and you'll learn that all he wants to do when you sin is to clean you up and to keep you from going the long way around because he's going to let you go. He's like, you know, the 99 that are fine, he's going to leave them there and chase after that one that's lost because they've lost their way. But he wants you to take the time to learn how to become one of those shepherds also that goes out and says, hey, look, I'm nobody perfect. I'm nothing special. I'm saved by grace just like you are. It was because Jesus died that I even can sit here and talk to you, much less, you know, make you realize that, hey, you know what? Every morning I wrestle with sin, and every night I wrestle with forgiveness, and every day I have to walk in between those two, going, what I've learned from grace to grace, continuing on in His mercy and His loving kindness that are renewed every morning, instead of going from guilt and running away from him until I come back to him and find grace. So you really can't go from guilt to guilt to grace to guilt to grace to guilt to kind of like, you know, do this wishy-washy thing where you got a headache. Or you can move in this place of why, like Chuck Smith said, grace changes things, or why your motivations will change and your attitude will change, and pretty soon you'll be doing it because you love to. It's kind of like, why do I sit out here when I can be gardening, you know, I'm taking care of my tomatoes, you know, my, man, I mean, I've got all kinds of things, projects to do that I'm going to do some of today, but why do I sit down and share the Lord, you know, why do I talk about Jesus when I could be, you know, writing books or making money or going to a job or watching TV, yeah, or, you know, doing some other project of some kind, why share Jesus, because he said to, because he told me to? Or because, like, you know, I feel bad about something I messed up, you know, recently, like maybe today, or because I am somehow, like, called, so if I don't do it, I will, you know, like, perish, or, you know, just be an angst in me, it'll drive me crazy. Those are all good motivations, you know, because some ways they all make sense, in some ways. But the reason I come out here is because I love it. I love sharing Jesus with you, because, you see... I love to hear about what you do with knowing Jesus as you go your way, discovering even more than I have. And believe me, I have discovered a lot, and I'm still discovering more every day. I love what I learned about God, and I know that if I could share a little bit of what I've learned, maybe it'll inspire you to go on with what you know and go farther than I've ever been. Because then you could tell me, hey, come on up here, check it out. And we would go up thither. You know, you know what I'm saying? Up thither, not hither. Because here is nice, you know, and it's kind of fun to have all these things. But you know, if you ask me where I'd rather be any day of the week or any time in my life, no matter where I am or what I'm doing, you'll hear me say, I want to go home. Because, pardon me, but as much as this is like, you know, nice, all I can
can say is, you know, give me Jesus. All I know is this is not my home. This is not where I belong. How about you? Where do you belong? Do you belong on your way home? Do you belong like in that guilt kind of guilt to praise, you know, kind of combination thing where you're always kind of feeling guilty, then all of a sudden you're praising overboard? You're always going from one extreme to the other? Or have you begun to realize that, you know what? When you sin, you go, <coughs> kind of like a heartbeat, you know? The heart keeps pumping. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And you just keep going. Because the sun's going to keep right on going in his path. And it's going to be dark in a little while. So while it's day, I think we ought to pray, we ought to walk, we ought to say what's really true about ourselves, whether in sin or in righteousness, whether in holiness or whether in sanctification, whether in mercy or whether in grace. Or whether somehow you got caught up in some kind of legalism, you know, kind of messed up in some kind of thinking, you know, thinking about this, that, or the other thing. I think whenever I get that way, I sit down and I read my devotion. I just kind of want to check out and check in what God might be saying to me because sometimes I need to start my day over again. So all through the day, I kind of refer back to either my Bible study or my, my devotional or my latest word God gave me. <laughs> the living God giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Beware that you forget the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you this day. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have goodly houses and dwell therein, then thy heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives you power to get wealth. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. They go not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of your countenance, O God, save them because you had favor unto them. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of thy countenance upon us, and show us, once again to this generation, how good it is of God to sit, be still, and know that you are, quite frankly, God. Awesome. That's all I can say. Awesome. <laughs>